Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Kuan Yu Liu. I'm a research scientist of QCAM in Pleasanton, California. It's my great pleasure today to have Carla Tao from Yale University introducing a new feature that is available in QCAM 5.3, Nuclear Electronic Orbital Method. Carla is a graduate student in Professor Sharon Hammer's Schiffer's group. Um, she contributed to development of electron-proton correlation functionals within the NEO, met NEO uh, framework. Um, her current research focuses on uh, water cluster with NEO DFT and NEO dynamics. She joined uh, QCAM developer community last year and visit QCAM for the implementation of NEO excited state methods within linear response theory. Uh, without further ado, um, I'd like to turn this over to Caroline. Thank you, Kwan, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me uh, in this QCAM webinar about NEO methods uh, that we put in QCAM 5.3. And I would like to first start with an outline of this webinar. I will first give an introduction to NEO methods and the motivation behind uh, NEO. And I will uh, go through and introduce you each method that we put in QCAM 5.3. For ground state properties, I will um, talk about NEO Hartree Fock, NEO DFT, and NEO geometry optimization. And I will then talk about excited properties that NEO can give. I will use NEO TDDFT as an example to show you what uh, excited states NEO can give. Last but not least, I will finish on um, a list of future development um, of new methods that we are putting in in future versions of QCAM. So what's the motivation behind new methods? For a conventional electronic structure series, uh, nuclei are often treated as clamped and Born-Oppenheimer separation is invoked and this would neglect nuclear quantum effects and non born oppenheimer effects, especially for geometry optimizations and dynamics. However, nuclear quantum effects and non born oppenheimer effects are very important for many, many systems, and I list some examples down below. For hydrogen bonding um, in water clusters, uh, we know that uh, the nuclear quantum effects uh, especially such as zero point energy for the hydrogens uh, are very important and uh, including them can change um, the relative energy trend for different I water isomers. And another example is melanaldehyde, which um, this shows that hydrogen tunneling hydrogen. Happen happens in um, melanaldehyde and you can see the density delocalization for this transferring hydrogen. And there are also, um, for proton couple electron transfer systems are abundant in many biological and chemical processes. And in this kind of um, chemical effect, uh, the transferring proton and the electrons behave quantum mechanically and non-adiabatic effects are very important for uh, this kind of system. So in NEO method, we avoid Born-Oppenheimer separation between electrons and light nuclei, such as protons. As you can see in this schematic uh, picture, we're moving this Born-Oppenheimer separation bar from separating electrons and nuclei to separating heavy nuclei and uh, electrons plus light nuclei, such as proton. And we're treating uh, spec specified light nuclei on the same level as electrons. This helps uh, capture nuclear quantum effects for the light nuclei that we're treating quantum mechanically. And here I show you the neo Hamiltonian, which can be separated into three terms. The first line we have are conventional electronic terms. And because we're treating light nuclei, mostly protons, the same level as electrons, we also have analogous nuclear terms showing in blue. And uh, we also have additional nuclear electronic interaction terms. 
So in order to solve uh, for solutions um, for um, under the new method, uh, the simplest approximation we can make is um, the Hartree-Fock approximation, where we're treating new wave function as a product of Slater determinants for electrons and protons. And we expand electronic nuclear molecular orbitals in Gaussian basis sets. And we can minimize um, the new energy with respect to electronic and nuclear molecular orbitals with constraints of orthonormality. And we can get a coupled um, hartree fock rutan equation, one for electron and for uh, quantum protons. And they're coupled, um, they look like they're separated, but they're really coupled through a, a mean field electron proton Coulomb interaction. Just like conventional hartree fock where the electron electron um, exchange correlation is, uh, the electron electron correlation term is uh, missing. And um, for a new hartree fock we also have the same problem. Um, and in addition to that, we also have inadequate treatment of electron proton correlation. And how does this manifest? To understand how this manifests, we have to um, talk about the benchmark methods we use for neo ground state methods, such as neo Hartree Fock. So, the first benchmark we use is um, we can compare proton vibrational uh, energies and wave functions by solving a 3D Schrodinger equation for um, the protons uh, using Fourier grid Hamiltonian method. And this is considered as exact for electronically adiabatic systems where electrons um, responding instantaneously to the motion of the proton. And to compute the adiabatic electronic potential, we have a grid um, of proton positions. And we, can, uh, we solve for um, the Schrodinger, we solve for uh, Schrodinger, time deep independent Schrodinger equation for um, electronic, um, um, on the grid of proton positions. And, to, and after solving the 3D Schrodinger equation for protons, we can get um, proton zero point energy and also wave function where we can compute proton density. Here I show you an example of uh, what um, proton density look like and how we compare to NEO method. So this is a FHF minus molecule. And uh, I took a, 1D density slice along the FF bond. And you can see um, how for the black curve here is the FGH reference proton density. And neo hartree fock the red dashed line here is much more localized compared to uh, a neo CCSD curve, which, is, which has um, more uh, electron proton correlation by including more excited determinants. And another um, benchmark we can use is we can compute proton affinities within new framework and we can compare it to experimental values. So here I show you the equation to compute proton affinity within uh, new framework where the EA here, the energy for um, the molecule without the um, H plus is computed with conventional uh, electronic uh, methods and the EA H plus here is computed with neo methods um, such as uh, neo Hartree Fock, and we're treating this H plus with uh, uh, quantum mechanically. And using this equation, um, the proton affinities we calculate um, are sh the results are shown here for this uh, 12 molecules. So for uh, neo CCSD, um, the mean absolute error is within chemical accuracy, one kcal per mole. But for neo hartree fock um, the um, mean absolute error is 14 kcal per mole. So this also shows a um, lack of electron-proton correlation. And um, in addition to including uh, electron-proton correlation through adding more um, excited determinants, we can also take another route um, using density functional theory to include um, electron-proton correlation. 
So for NEO uh, methods, uh, you, combining NEO with density functional theory, it belongs to uh, multi-component density functional theory, where we're treating more than one type of uh, particle quantum mechanically. And there are analogous hohenberg cohn theory for multi-component systems, where the total energy is a unique functional of um, electron density and proton density. Here, the total energy uh, can be broken into an um, external potential energy for electron proton, um, which is system dependent. And there's also a universal functional um, for electron and proton. And under the quotient formalism, um, the total energy uh, can be further broken down into um, these pieces. So it, it has external uh, potential energy and uh, the non-interacting kinetic reference energy for electron and proton and the mean field um, Coulomb interaction and uh, electron exchange correlation term energy and proton exchange correlation energy and electron proton correlation energy. So for electron exchange, correla exchange correlation energy, we um, have been using conventional exchange correlation functionals. And for proton exchange correlation energy, um, due to the localized nature of um, proton uh, density in molecular systems, uh, we have been using just Hartree-Fock exchange energy. And um, for electron proton correlation, uh, we have um, developed um, several, a series of e electron proton correlation functionals, and um, such as EPC 172 and EPC 19. I will get into details about them in the next slide. And we can get um, two sets of equations by using variational uh, method on the total energy and since. The equations, uh, similarly to uh, Neil Hartree Fock, they're coupled and we have to solve them self consistently. So, here I give you an, a little bit theoretical background on EPC 172 and EPC 19 electron proton correlation functionals. Those are based on multi component extension of Ko Savadi formalism for electron correlation and is the foundation of um, the well, um, widely used LYP electronic correlation functional. So we start with a multi-component electron proton wave function on that. And um, the on that equation is given here. I would like to um, start by explaining the, F, the full CI note here. So the full CI indicates a full CI, full CI level of um, same particle treatment. So for instance, for electronic wave function, uh, full CI means this wave function has um, full CI level of treatment of uh, electronic electron-electron exchange correlation. And similarly for the proton wave function, we have the full CI level treatment of proton-proton exchange correlation. So a product of this two-wave function will give us only a mean field uh, electron proton uh, treatment. That's why we're adding a correlation factor here to, income, to um, count um, for electron proton correlation. And the correlation factor formula is given um, as here. And the, um, the exponent has, um, this beta here is the inverse correlation length. And because it's an exponent of uh, exponential function, it can be seen as um, related to the area of um, where electron proton correlation is important. So in convention, in um, the Kosavadi formalism, beta r, this uh, inverse correlation length depends on um, only on um, row electron density. But now we are uh, making it um, for to account electron proton correlation. So we make the dependence as a geometric mean between for the electron density and proton density. And then in the end, when we have um, Taylor series expansion for the electron proton energy, 
um, we can truncate at the level where we only include local electron and proton density dependence. That's where um, EPC-17-2 functional um, comes from. And when we uh, go beyond one more step to include local density gradient um, dependence, um, then we can then we arrive at EPC-19 functional. So let me give you the performance of those two functionals. So we parameterized um, those two functionals to um, get accurate proton density and energy compared to our FGH benchmark. And the two molecules we used is FHF minus and HCN. Those are considered as electronically adiabatic systems. So the FGH is uh, exact for those molecules. And as you can see here, I show you the pro 1D slice proton density. This is again taken on axis um, for along FF, FF bound, and this is taken on axis along CN bound. Um, the black curve again is the uh, FGH reference, and um, the blue curve here is neo DFT without any EPC core. Uh, it, uh, without any electron proton correlation treatment. And the density is much more localized. And this is also reflected uh, from the three dimensional root mean square deviation compared to the grid reference. And the green curve here is the EPC 172. Again, it has only local density dependence. And EPC 19, the purple curve, have um, um, the both local density and uh, local density gradient dependence. So it has um, improvement over uh, density. And if we just take these two functionals um, without further parameterizing, and we uh, use them to ca calculate proton affinities, we also get uh, accurate proton affinities using those two functionals. So here I present you the data by comparing to um, 23 molecules uh, proton affinities. And they uh, range from amines, inorganics, uh, carboxylates, and aromatics. So if we don't include any electron proton correlation, the mean and sun error can be high as 18 kcal per mole. Um, with uh, EPC and EPC-19, we can get down this um, to 1.4 kcal per mole. And this um, um, and this this number is within um, is close to chemical accuracy and is within experimental accuracy. In addition, the EPC functionals um, can be used with a wide range of electronic exchange correlation functional. As you can see, the mean and sun arrows um, are similar for all electronic functionals shown here, except SVWN. And because SVWN for no EPC uh, also gives higher uh, mean and sun error. So this, um, this uh, higher mean and sun error we observe when we use EPC-17-2 is most likely due to the limitation, uh, inherent limitation for SVWN rather than the uh, EPC functional. So after introduced neo Hartree-Fock and neo DFT, um, we can uh, move on to talk about neo geometry optimization. Uh, in neo geometry optimization, we search for a minimum on the neo potential energy surface. And neo potential energy surface compared to a conventional potential energy surface, it has reduced dimension. Um, so for this um, neo potential energy surface, the, um, it only depends on the classical nuclear coordinates. So for instance, uh, it doesn't have um, the coordinates from the qu protons that we're treating, treating quantum mechanically. And for if we do a new geometry optimization and get optimized geometries, uh, those include proton density delocalization, zero point energy, and unharmonicity. Um, inherently because we're treating the protons quantum mechanically. And here I show you an example 
um, for neo geometry optimization. This is again FHF minus molecule, and the data are showing um, in this table. So bear with me as I uh, go through this table. So first, if we um, look across the row here, we can see um, for the reference here, the FGH reference um, gives a increase of FF distance compared to uh, a standard DFT geometry optimization because we're treating the, again, the proton quantum mechanically. And uh, this increase can be captured also with neo DFT um, with this two functionals. And the similar story um, for FDF minus where um, the reference also increased the FF distance compared to standard, D uh, standard DFT method. And NeoDFT with EPC functionals can also capture this increase. And in addition, um, neo geometry optimization can also capture ge uh, ge ge geometric isotope effects. For instance, if we go, up, um, go down each column here, um, the standard DFT, of course, doesn't capture this uh, geometric isotope effect on the FF distance change when we substitute the hydrogen with uh, deuterium. Um, however, for um, reference um, FGH method, the FF distance for FDF minus is uh, lower than FHF minus. And this uh, trend is qualitatively, qualitatively captured by neo DFT with EPC functionals. So um, because we're interested in study uh, systems like proton couple electron transfer or um, photo-induced proton transfer systems, uh, ground st we, don't, we no longer only need uh, ground state information, but we also um, need uh, information about um, uh, quantities such as fibronic um, excitation. Um, so um, we have also developed um, new methods to get excited state properties. And um, here I give you, um, I will introduce you to uh, NEO within linear response, uh, NEO TDDFT. So NEO TDDFT is, um, is a linear response of NEO Kohlsheim system to perturbative external fields. And um, this process is captured in the this schematic uh, picture here. So we first have a perturbation in the total potential and this introduce a change in the density matrix for electron and proton. And this is um, captured in this uh, response function here. And then the change in density matrix further in induce a change in the internal potential for electron proton. Those are also coupled. And um, this change is uh, reflected in the kernels here. And this process can be put into a working equation showing down here. Um, if you look at the, um, the red box here, that's, um, that's, that's what we're more familiar with, um, electronic TDDFT. And analogously, we also have a protonic TDDFT and a um, coupling matrix C here to couple um, those two uh, blocks. And um, the kernel here um, are also uh, in the AB matrix, the K, K terms. And those are um, theoretically uh, frequency dependent, but we have to, but we, here we also invoke adiabatic approximation um, to avoid, uh, to neglect the frequency dependence in the kernels, which means we do not get double excitation. Um, but for the single excitation, we can also get um, different characters. Uh, for instance, for electronically adiabatic systems where the proton excitations are um, decoupled uh, from electronic excitations, um, the excitation character given by neo TDDFT can then be mostly pure electronic or pure, pure protonic. And for more um, electronic Nuclear non adiabatic systems, we can see more a mixing of electron proton character in single excitation, um, single excitations. And this is um, 
this is uh, can be seen as a linear combination of singly excited uh, determinant of either electron or proton. So here, uh, let's first look at electronic excitation given by uh, neo TDDFT. So we first, um, if we study a system like FHF minus, which is uh, mostly electronic adiabatic, um, the lower for lower electronic excitations, the energies are very similar to conventional electronic TDDFT because the coupling between electronic excitation and proton excitations are very small. As you can see in this table here, for the first um, a few uh, electronic excitations, neo TDDFT um, uh, differs with TDDFT only about 0 0.01 eV, which is a small difference. Um, however, for um, higher electronic states, um, it could we still could see vibronic mixing, and which results in uh, energy shifts we see for electronic excitation. Um, so, for instance, this molecule here is HCN, although it's uh, mostly also electronic adiabatic. For higher electronic excitation states, we still see energy shifts. Um, between TDDFT and neo TDDFT. And this picture here, I have to um, say that this is uh, from a real time calculation. So this is not within frequency calculation. Um, however, um, we have this, we have benchmark um, the real time results with frequency domain calculation. So the, um, but the difference is uh, some of the peaks might not be shown in the real time domain because they're not active. Now let's look at proton vibrational excitation. So um, we can, so the benchmark we use for proton vibrational excitation is again the FGH uh, grid reference. And here I show you the um, first two proton ex vibrational excitation for FHF minus and HCN. Um, so for FHF minus, the off axis is labeled, uh, is defined as uh, the axis perpendicular to the FF uh, bond distance, and on axis is again along the FF bond. So off axis mode can be seen more as a bending mode, where on axis is more a uh, stretching mode. And um, Neil can get um, those two uh, proton vibrational excitations in general um, with mostly 20 wave number, as you can see from um, the table here and the arrow um, less than 100 wave number. And in general, for to get accurate proton vibrational excitation, it requires a large electronic and proton protonic basis set. You may notice um, the basis set um, here under the table so CCPVDZ60, this is the electronic basis set. And it means we're treating, let's say for FHF minus, we're treating um, the classical nuclei, um, the two fluorine um, with DZ and uh, CCPV60 for the quantum hydrogen. And it's important to have large um, basis set for the electronic basis set for the quantum hydrogen. And for protonic basis set, we're using an even tempered um, nuclear basis, 8S, 8P, 8D, and 8F. Um, and that will, um, I will have a, one separate slide on nuclear basis set um, uh, later. So I will go into more details about uh, choices of uh, protonic basis set. And we can, um, further characterize the vibrational proton vibrational state by uh, visualizing the transition density and dipole moments. For instance, um, we can see uh, the transition dipole moments pointing to off axis, so which correspond to a bending mode, sim and similarly here. And this um, transition dipole moment is along the CN axis, and it uh, corresponds to a stretching mode. And another um, uh, point is, um, although Tem-Denkov approximation um, works um, 
many times well in uh, electronic TDDFT. Um, for neo TDDFT, uh, it, the term Dankov approximation can overestimate proton vibrational excitations around 2000 wave number. So it doesn't uh, get very, uh, so we don't recommend using this for uh, proton vibrational excitation energies. Um, and um, I also have to uh, explain that the bending and the stretching mode we get uh, are not meant to be compared directly to, um, let's say, error spectrum yet, because we're um, separating, we're not, we don't have the coupling um, between C and stretching mode and um, the CH modes here. However, we have um, developed a method in our group called NeoDFQV, which um, can couple the quantum and classical nuclear vibrations, and then we'll also get into a little bit details later. So um, previously, I mentioned uh, choices of nuclear basis set and large nuclear basis set is important to get accurate proton vibrational excitations. And here, I would like to just uh, say more about it. Um, so first, nuclear basis function centers should be optimized variationally um, because neo potential energy surface only depends on the coordinates of classical nuclei. Um, so um, theoretically, to be on a neo uh, potential energy surface, we have to op uh, optimize nuclear basis function centers. Um, however, in practice, the difference might be small. And um, for and for proton uh, basis set choice, previously I talked about the even tempered 8s, 8p, 8d, 8f, and their um, exponents are listed um, here. So it's ranging from two to this uh, two times square root of two to 32, and this is um, 8s, and you have 8p all the way to 8f. So it's a quite large uh, basis set for protons. And then recently, uh, Qi from our group has um, optimized exponents of um, different primitive Gaussian functions. And he was, he has, and in his paper, there's uh, um, different choices of proton basis functions. You can find more details in um, his paper. And um, one main highlight is for, um, there's one new proton basis set which has 4s3p 2d 2f, he could uh, op he optimize it to perform very similarly to um, the previous 8s ap ad af we've been using, and you can see the exponents uh, listed here. So this can help cap, um, cut down the cost for the uh, computation. And um, I give the example uh, from the QCAM input, new input. And as you can see, you have your uh, general molecule section. And this example is FHF minus. And if we want to treat this hydrogen quantum mechanically, um, we have to specify a separate section for neo basis. And the, because it's the third uh, molecule in the molecule section, uh, third atom in the molecule center, a uh, molecule section. So we're um, putting three here and uh, you can list the exponents here. Um, and for all the new methods, you need to specify uh, new basis section uh, in, at least in 5.3, we might um, improve the structure of new basis for future QCAM version. And um, so here I would like to summarize um, the, a list of new features we put in QCAM 5.3. So for ground state uh, energies and geometry optimization, um, they include a proton delocalization and harmonicity and zero point energy. And I have gone through neo hartree fock neo DFT um, with um, either no electron proton correlation treatment uh, or EPC 17.2 and 19. And those are um, available in QCAM 5.3. And the commands to run them are very simple. 
as you can see, I give you example here for the input, um, you still need, you have your um, regular molecule section. And then for the REM variables, um, the most important keyword to um, specify a NEO calculation is this NEO equals true um, um, line. And then you can um, put a method, um, if you put a functional here, it was the along with new equals true, this will be a new DFT calculation. And you can um, choose um, different functional, either EPC 17, 2 or 19, or just don't include any if you don't want um, any EPC uh, treatment. And this can be combined with uh, job type equals optimized to get to do a neo geometry optimization. And again, you have to have a for QCAM 5.3, you need to have a section for a neo basis. And the output, you can get neo ground state energy. And um, if you do a geometry optimization, you can get the optimized FF geometry using um, a neo ground state method. And more commands and examples uh, can be found in uh, QCAM 5.3 manual under the specialized topics. And for new excitation energies and characters, I have uh, given you new TDDFT as an example. So it's able to um, calculate vibronic excitation energies, either pure electron, pure proton, or mixed electron proton character. And um, these are the this methods new CIS, new TD Hartree Fock, new TDA, and new TDDFT with no EPC and EPC 17.2 um, are available in QCAM 5.3. And the commands to run new excited state calculations are also simple. As you can see in the REM variable list, all you need to do is you can you just need to add uh, the number of roots um, you want from the new excited state calculation and um, use this set RPA command to specify if um, you want uh, neo TDHF or neo TDDFT um, or um, CIS or TDA. And for the output, um, for I also give you the example of FHF minus. And you can see for um, this gives you the first proton vibrational um, state and vibrational energy and they correspond to a um, bending mode here. And then the from the excitation amplitudes, you can see um, this, the dominant transitions are from the occupied uh, proton orbital to the first and second degenerate virtual orbitals. And these are some, it has very little mixing from the electronic transitions. And here is a list of um, future NEO features we're putting in in QCAM. So we are putting in NEO ground state uh, proton expectation value and density visualization, and also excited state oscillator strength and uh, transition density visualization. And we are also putting in NEO CCSD and NEO EOM CCSD, which gets you excited state um, information based on. Uh, neo CCSD. In addition, we're um, adding neo SOS prime OMP2, um, which scales um, also EP the EPC term in addition to scaling um, uh, same spin and opposite spin as conventional SOS OMP2. And this uh, gets also a accurate, pretty, pretty accurate um, proton density and proton affinities approaching neo CCSD with um, um, a benefit in uh, scaling and computational speed. And um, to test um, the valid, the um, to test how good the Born Oppenheimer separation we're making between quantum nuclei and classic classical nuclei. We also put in the, uh, the neo DBOC calculation, which uh, can tell tell us um, how good uh, we're making this approximation. 
and um, can also be added to a new potential energy service. Uh, last but not least, uh, we're putting new DFPV method, which can uh, calculate full vibrational spectrum. This kind of um, picture summarizes how Neo DFT works. Um, it will first uh, we'll first do a Neo Hessian, which gets us the um, classical nuclear vibration, and then we coupled with Neo TDDFT as approximation to um, the quantum nuclei vibration modes. Um, this from this we can build a extended Neo Hessian to get Neo coupled vibration, which also includes unharmonicity. And um, I give you the, um, if you want to learn more about um, this, those methods, uh, I give, I list the reference for those methods down here. So um, for the acknowledgement, I would like to thank Professor Sharon Hamschiffer, who is as my advisor, and also um, Fabian, who has um, um, also worked with me in putting a lot of the NEO methods into QCAM 5.3. And I would also like to thank um, the QCAM developers in our NEO group, um, Tanner, Chi, Patrick, Ben, and Shashito. And they're also the developer of many of the NEO methods I listed in um, and talked about and also listed at future directions. And I would also like to thank Evgeny and Xin Tian who helped us a lot in uh, as we we're putting new methods in QCAM and also the funding in NITSF and uh, DOE side back. And thank you for your for listening and um, any questions are welcome. Thank you, Caroline. It's an interesting work. Uh, there are questions from the audience. And again, please send me your questions uh, in the question box down below. Um, so do you have a, a rough idea about the additional costs for the new hot tree fog, new DFT, new mm -hmm. TDFT uh, on top of the regular or traditional hot tree fog DFT and DFT? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the formal scaling is the same as conventional um, methods such as uh, hard tree fog or DFT, um, but it has uh, some extra um, scaling coming from, let's say, calculating the proton proton um, part or electron proton correlation. But those should not be the um, dominant cost because we have way more. Uh, we have usually uh, more electronic uh, orbitals uh, for like a real realistic chemical system. So it's um, so Neo really has the advantage of um, uh, improving the of um, like efficient computation. Yeah, that's great. Uh, is it possible to use a new method to run an excited state molecular dynamics? Um, so we are we are actually moving to um, calculate many the dynamic. Um, properties. Um, so, so, um, so Neo. Um, so let's say if you're doing like a Neo um, for an Oppenheimer uh, BOMD calculation, and um, so the each it would has um, zero point energy in each uh, Neo step. But if we want to introduce um, correct coupling from the classical uh, motion, uh, we have to um, do some, we have to include either like some non-born Oppenheimer um, effects such as we can do like surface hopping um, or Arifest, that's more um, we're thinking. But if you just do a new born Oppen, um, Heimer MD that could um, potentially you're separating the motion from classical nuclei and the quantum proton. Although it's for some system it might be okay, but it depends on the system you're looking. Okay, thanks. Um, the next question uh, is it possible to use the same technique to deal with the positrons? Mm -hmm. 
Right, we actually have applied um, new uh, CCSD to study positronic hydride, and we get um, pretty good um, results for if we use like new EOM CCSD, we get pretty good um, the excitation energies. <laughs> um, so right now you're talking about the the quantum proton right is it is there mm -hmm. some is there some cases where the heavy atom would be uh dominant in quantum effect rather than mm -hmm. just the, uh the proton yeah for sure there um for sure for many systems the uh quantum effects for other heavy nuclei might be important um, but um, neo methods we can also develop or extend neo to include um, the nuclear quantum effects for um, heavier uh, nuclei and we already showed um, the case for deuterium um, however neo method is not really um, trying to replace other methods that are such as like path integral methods where uh, you can get, you're able to capture all the nuclear quantum effects, but it's really um, designed for systems that um, nuclear quantum effects for, let's say you have a transparent proton, that transparent proton has the dominant nuclear quantum effects um, and it's, um, and NEO can incorporate it, incorporate it uh, efficiently in that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, next question: um, Can we do the R calculation, IR calculations using a new method? Um, is mm -hmm. it implemented yet? Um, so this falls into uh, the new DFTV method, um, where I did I was talking about earlier. Um, so it can it. And this are, we're implementing it in QCAM, but it will be available in future, um, future QCAM versions. And this can give us a fully coupled uh, vibration, which can be compared to IR spectrum and it has unharmonicity uh, in it. I see. Uh, do you have the preliminary data uh, in one of the papers shown below? For the, uh, for neo DFPV? Yeah, the, um, the last one. Right. So I don't have the table currently, but it can be shown. It can be found in this um, paper, okay. this reference I, here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can see we compare, like, um, for instance, the CH uh, stretch to like a um, convert to like a harmonic um, frequent vibrational frequencies versus um, unharmonic, and you can see Neo is able to capture the unharmonicity of the CH stretch. I see. Um, it has a couple molecules you can find in the paper. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have plan to extend this method to the M NMR calculations? Um, actually, I think there's, uh, I, I, we haven't, we haven't done that yet. It could be a possible direction. And I think, um, so we recently had start uh, pop, uh, collaboration with Professor Shawson Lee's group and which was the real time spectrum I showed earlier. And um, and think he um, might be, I think that's something he's also interested in looking at. And Neil could be very useful in um, an MR spectrum. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question: um, uh, How do the um, water molecule systems change um, if we use uh, the new method to have any kind of a rough mm -hmm. idea? Of it? Yeah. Like so the for, uh, mm -hmm. the, yeah, so for water molecules, um, for water clusters, I, the question is about water clusters, right? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So first, um, one thing first is um, definitely for the relative energies uh, for different water isomers, 
um, um, we know that if we include zero point energy for um, the for um, the oxygen and protons uh, or in the hydrogens, it, the trend could change um, dramatically for um, systems like protonated water clusters. And neo methods can, and neo ground state can just get the. And we're we're actually I'm actually studying this. So neo ground state energy can should be able to get um, the ZP um, for those relative energy trend, and it's um, has the benefit of uh, efficient computational cost, a uh, uh, lower uh, computational cost. And as for geometry. Um, uh, properties. I I haven't uh, looked at those yet, but I think since Neo includes um, proton ZP and harmonicity just in the um, calculation, like ground state, let's say self consistently, um, they should be able to capture um, things like OH distance change. And for OO distance, um, we might need to um, think about how to do it because um, NEO again doesn't, uh, at least NEO ground state um, assumes a, a separation, more open separation between the OO motion and the OH quantum motion. So we have to find a way to couple them in order to have a fully, um, uh, fully study for the geometry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are no more questions here. Um, we will move to close the webinar. And if you have more questions later, feel free to contact me. I'll get you in, get in touch to Caroline if necessary. And if you came late or you want to watch it again, a video will be available on YouTube in the next few days. And I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank Caroline for her great work and very inter interesting talk about it. Uh, I also want to thank the attendees um, for listening and participating. Um, and this concludes our uh, webinar. Thank you, Kuan Yu. This concludes our webinar. We would like to thank Kuan Yu Lu for organizing, running, and moderating this webinar. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation and see you at the next webinar.